Praise the Lord. I want to introduce the fivefold ministry and spiritual gifts. The fivefold ministry calling and the complementary gift of the Spirit and Holy Spirit endowment. There are five of the main ministry callings as well as nine main gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the ministry calling is found in Ephesians 4, the gift chapter. Sometimes we call it different names. Ascension gifts, leadership gifts, headship gifts, or more commonly called fivefold ministry. And of course, you hear me call it ministry callings. Complementing that in unity as they work together in unism is the nine main gifts of the Spirit. It's not only nine, but the nine main ones in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to flesh out the bare bone essential as usual. Now, the gifts, the fivefold ministry gifts are actually people. Here, you discover that your prophet is a gift. Your pastor is a gift. Your teacher is a gift. Your evangelist is a gift. Your pastor is a gift. Why? Because these gifts are people that Jesus Christ appointed or called when he ascended on high as he was glorified and as he has become victorious he gave gifts unto men to represent him in his body of which he is the head together with that gift is what is called the membership or the body gifts given to every member of the body of christ regardless of the fact that they are leaders or members. It doesn't matter. So, in addition to the leadership gifts or calling, which are people or personalities, you also have endowments or graces or anointing or unction to function that he also gave them in addition, as well as the rest of the member of body of Christ. So here, if you noticed, you discover that the gifts of people or personality represent Christ, the head or the leader of the church or the head of the body. And Jesus, of course, is the over shepherd of this gift or the great shepherd. Now, you discover that the family is mentioned, or rather the Trinity uh, is mentioned in concert of the operation of the nine gifts. Unlike the fivefold ministry where only Christ was mentioned, the nine gifts of the Spirit are manifestation of the presence of the indwelling Holy Spirit, sometimes I call it a domain from on high, through the members of the body of Christ, otherwise called membership or body gifts. The nine gifts uh, before I come to the five main gifts of the fivefold ministry, the nine main body gifts, let's start from there, are the utterance gifts, which include tongues, the sister gift of interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. The next three are the revelational gifts. They are word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discernment of spirits. Most often people confuse revelation or word of knowledge and word of wisdom with the gift of prophecy. I will distinguish it and distinctly dissect them down the road, compare and also contrast them. The third group of gifts are what I call the power gifts or gifts that demonstrate things. They are gifts of healings, the working of miracles, and the gift of supernatural or special faith, sometimes called the God kind of faith. When these gifts are found in leaders, as in the fivefold ministry, they work on a slightly higher 
dimension of anointing as God will have it. Now let's go to Ephesians quickly. Ephesians to dissect and look at the ministry gifts. Fivefold ministry as they are commonly called. And I will start from 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9. It will give us a closer look or a broader outlook and definition and the operation of these gifts. And it says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended? In the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I want you to see something here. The fivefold ministry are, which you know we talk about the rule of the finger. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the little finger, the teacher. I call it the rule of five or the fivefold ministry. This is the ministry of the apostle. And like I always teach, it is the ministry that can touch all the fingers comfortably and conveniently is then an umbrella ministry. The apostle or apostolic calling is a gift whereby he can do everything or a little bit of everything in the body of Christ. An apostle can teach, an apostle can pastor, an apostle can evangelize or lead in evangelism or evangelistic outreach to give birth to new people coming into the body of Christ. An apostle can also prophesy. Most of them have prophetic anointing and gifting. And an apostle can also um, lead churches, raise leaders, build work of God. They are visionaries for the most part. They are like leader of leader. Sometimes they are called elders. The greatest apostle is Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's called the sent one or apostolos. The apostle and the prophet laid down the foundation of the church. The Old Testament prophets wrote most of the Bible. The New Testament apostle also wrote most of the Bible. The, the Lord says, no foundation can any man lay except that laid by Jesus Christ, of which the apostles and prophets are the foundation. So they are the foundation of the church or church membership of the body of Christ of which God, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the head. The second ministry or pivotal ministry is the office of the prophet. This is pivotal, very important, and key position. They don't just prophesy, they are also visioners. In the scripture, the prophetic is represented by the eagle or the eagle eye. In the body of Christ is the eye and the nervous system of the church. So the apostle is not only a uh, 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 prophetic, but also the prophet can be apostolic because if you've been a teacher or a pastor and God is leading you to the prophetic, then you know that eventually he's moving you to the prophetic office, uh, the apostolic office. They work together. They're almost similar and their training is more intensive or intense than other five or the, uh, the, the other three of the five gifts, like the teacher, the pastor, or the evangelist. Now, the prophet 
can prophesy, can raise leaders, anoint them, release them to their prophetic destiny. They can sing, they can write, they can pastor a church, they can lead revival, they can pray, intercessory ministry. And I already have a video on too many things the prophet can do in the body of Christ. You've seen here that they are supposed to be equipping the saints for the work of ministry and they define the body of Christ with the other four. Now, the next one is the office of evangelists. You see, look at the hand, is the tallest finger. It's the one that towers above every other finger. Why? Is the outreach. It's the one for evangelism. It's the one that goes beyond the four walls of the church. It's the one that brings in new members so that the teacher and the pastor can teach, nourish them, establish root and grant them in what they believed. So they, this is for birthing. Very important. Outreach is very important. Mobilizing people, bringing people to the kingdom and then allowing the pastor and the teacher to nourish them, to embellish them, to grant them, to root them, to teach them with knowledge and understanding. Now, quickly, you have the office of the pastor. Sometimes we call it the ring finger. Is the ring finger. And the ring finger is for love, is for care, is for protection and nurturing. That is the office of the pastor. Sometimes in a lot of Baptist churches, the office of the pastor and the teacher are mingled together. They don't distinguish pastor and teacher because they go together. Remember the Bible says, I will give you pastors or shepherds after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. The pastor, that finger is the covenant ring or the long finger. And it's so important and pivotal to nourish people, to protect them, to teach them, to cover them, to advance them, and to raise them up to fulfill destiny. Jesus is very concerned about his church. That when he rose from dead in his victorious resurrection, he asked Peter three things. If you love me, Peter said yes for the third time. I said, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lamb. Three good times. It's like after Peter denied him, Peter told him he loved him three times. All he was telling him was about his church to feed his flock. The church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, the members of the body of Christ. Jesus is very concerned. And he's of course our great shepherd or shepherd of our soul. And every other pastor is an under shepherd under Jesus tutelage and supervision or oversight. The bishop of all of the gifts is also the giver. Now, you now have the teacher, the teaching ministry is represented by the little finger. Is the only finger that can fit into the ear conveniently and comfortably. And is the office of the teacher that breaks down things so that you can take it down. It's for inspiration, for knowledge, for understanding, to root you, to grant you, to establish you on what you've already be believed. And when he builds you up, so that you can not only excel with knowledge and wisdom for living, but also for excelling, to succeed in life, to succeed in your Christian life and Christian testimony, and to succeed in your Christian journey, and to be an effective Christian, an effective and powerful disciple that is knowledgeable, very, very powerful, and very, very articulate and establishing what they believed. So, within this five-fold ministry, because they are members of the body of Christ. Don't forget that even though they are leaders, they are also members of the body of Christ. Or what we call, they also have the body gifts. So when the body gifts are found in them, let's look at the body gifts real quickly. Because this is an intro. And I want to talk about that and show you 
how I come into conclusion of them. Now it's in Ephesians 12 from verse 1. I'll read here and there because I'm trying to introduce it. Say, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And look at verse 4. Jump to verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities, uh, uh, diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Seven, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all this worketh that one, that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And look at 12. And I'm shooting at something here. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So here, we have distinguished the nine gifts into three times three. In other words, we divided the gifts into three main blocks. The first block is what is called the inspirational or utterance gifts, which include the powerful gateway gift of tongues, speaking of tongues, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. The second or sister gift is the interpretation of that tongue. And the third gift is the gift of prophecy. Sometimes we, that's why we, sometimes we call it vocal gifts. The two second set of gifts is revelational gifts or gifts that reveal or unveil something. They are not prophecy, like you've seen prophecies under inspiration. They are word of knowledge, which talks about the plans and purposes of God on the past or present. Or word of wisdom, which is application of God's knowledge, which talks about the plans and purposes of God in the future. And then discernment of spirits, ability to see into the realm of the spirit, to know whether a problem is caused by a demon or a spirit, whether good, bad, or ugly. So it's not the gift of discernment, it's the gift of discernment of spirits. And then the third group of gifts are what is called power gifts or gifts that display the anointing or unction. And they are the working of miracles. Or rather, first of all, the gift of healing, plural, because there are different kinds of healing and different kinds of graces of healing. And then with the working of miracles, because you have to work it out, you have to create atmosphere. And then the gift of supernatural faith or the God kind of faith and the faith that comes and goes. And this is the third level or third dimension or higher dimension of faith. So you now discover here that the Trinity was involved. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you talk about the administration of the gift, talk about operation of the gift, talk about the manifestation of gift by the same, same Spirit. All the members of Trinity are involved in operation of these gifts in the body of Christ. So here we have introduced the gifts. Another time I will come back and flesh in each and every one of them, not just the fivefold ministry gifts, sometimes we call it callings, headship gift, or ascension gift. We call it ascension gift because we read in Ephesians 4, verse 9, that Jesus gave these gifts to his body leaders, or leaders in the body of Christ, or leaders he chose or handpicked by himself according to his discretion and discernment and divine wisdom to make them the head or leaders of the church. 
So they go by different names. So when people say, I'm called into the fivefold ministry, it's either pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, or apostle, the fivefold. So you have to know the office and the calling and the description and the training. So that you can know how God calls people. There are different kinds of call. At least four degree of call. The first call is call from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Or what we call the call to salvation. Or being saved. And being brought into the kingdom. That's number one. Number second call is call into Christian discipleship and service. The third call is call to full-time ministry or full-time voc vocation. And the fourth call, of course, is called to rapture. You know, to go back to be with Christ wherever he is in heaven. So, this is the fourth call. About this one here, we are talking about the second call after being born again, after being engrafted in Christ, after being a child of God, which is the call to the full-time ministry or five-fold ministry, which are extension of Jesus, his leadership or his headship. And then the nine gift of the Spirit complement these gifts also so that when they are found in the leaders, they work in greater and higher dimension of grace and anointing. So let's recapitulate. They are, the five-fold ministries are the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, and the apostle, fivefold ministry. And the nine gifts of the Spirit are tongues, interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. The second block, which is revelational, are word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discernment of spirit. And the third group, that made it the nine, three times three, are the gift of healings, the working of miracles, and the gift of supernatural faith. Both of them work together. But to summarize, the leadership gift of fivefold ministry, the callings, are gifts that are people, personalities, or leaders, whereas the gift we mentioned about as knife gift of the spirit or endowments or anointing or unction are body gifts given to the members of the body of Christ. And these body gifts operate in a lesser anointing and, and lesser firepower than the other fivefold gifts. Dr. Zo, bye bye. I feel like introducing this. Later on, we can flesh in them one by one. Like, I'll take the apostle and go into details. I'll take the prophetic and go into details. And I will also take the evangelist, go into details. Take the pastor, go into more intense detail. And in fact, finally, the teacher, I'll go also into details. God bless you, Dr. Zo. Talk to you.